It's been just over a year since we've started this new show, and I have you to thank for standing by me as we've seen it grow. I've also been blessed to be supported by some exceptional people who have believed in this project from the very beginning. So I'm thrilled to share a little bit more about one of their stories with you here today. On this episode of Justin Stride Community Spotlight Edition, we'll dig a little deeper into what fuels the man behind Exact Nutrition, founder, entrepreneur, and community builder, Lawrence Colesell. You might recognize Lawrence from interview number two, but we wanted to bring him back to learn more about what makes him tick. We try to get a glimpse of what motivates him, the challenges he faces, and how he stays so passionate after 12 years of building his dream. Lawrence, welcome back to the Justin Stride podcast. Thanks, Justin. Happy to be here. Yeah, this one's a community spotlight. We want to shed some light on you and and exact and tell the exact story as I'm calling it and get your side of this story, get your motivations, your challenges, what you face kind of or what you faced over the last 12 years building this company. And it's wild that it's been this long. It, it, it certainly it certainly is well it's been that long I have to I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, it, it doesn't feel like 12 years and like like when you achieve anything or get anywhere in life I think you look back and then you can kind of see all the things that have happened uh, maybe things that you didn't expect would happen or go the way you thought they would go um, I guess my first question is you know where was the motivation? at the very onset of starting this thing and, and what in your mind were the goals that you were set out to achieve? Yeah. Well, I think, I think the, um, the, the motivation really, I don't think it was necessarily wanting to do something specific in, in run or, or even in, in sports per se. It was really, um, it came from, um, it sounds it sounds a little bit grand, but wanting to do something with my life, um, and and what I mean by that is, you know, I'd been I'd been working in you know various jobs and was you know pretty pretty happy in them, but I I I felt really compelled to make a significant change in in what I did for work. That I think I think that's that was sort of the the big background thing that maybe was bubbling along, but that just meant that I was sort of perhaps a little bit more on the lookout for an opportunity um, and a little bit more aware of, of I felt I didn't see myself just working for the, uh, the employer I had back, back then, um, who I'm super grateful for. I mean, they, uh, they, they, uh, they took me from Britain to, to Paris, that wonderful like training opportunities. And in fact, they sponsored me to come to Canada. So it's thanks to them that I, you know, was able to bring my family here and, you know, um, you know, they paid for the move, like, like it was awesome and, you know, helped me with uh, permanent residency, residency and all those things. But um, at a certain point in my life, um, I don't know if it, maybe, maybe it's a midlife crisis, who knows? But I kind of felt that um, I didn't see an exciting future for myself and for my family um, staying there. And I guess I think I, at a certain point, maybe I felt I wasn't really learning. Um, as much as I had been in the years before, which I found really, really stimulating and fun. I love learning, um, whether it be, uh, well, particularly cooking, like I love learning to cook. And um, I love learning to, you know, organize things properly. I love all, all those things. And that's very stimulating for me. And that that really kind of feeds, um, feeds my energy, uh, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and then I think it was, then it was more just, perhaps circumstances um i've i've always always as far as i can remember like going back right as a kid probably one of my first like really um cool experiences was the first time i was given like total autonomy uh not just not by myself but a small bunch of kids for me we must have been 11 or something like that um and it was a multi-day hike where you have to be completely autonomous um you know and it's done safely and all that stuff but it didn't doesn't feel like that <laughs> so you're out you know, on the moor, Dartmoor, which is known for just like, it's like the wet bit of Britain. So Britain's wet. Everyone knows it's where everyone takes the piss. But yeah. this is like the wettest bit. <laughs> and so you've got, you've got, you know, it's like a, I don't know, 20, no, 30 mile hike. But you have to have, you know, your tent, your food, you know, your everything. 
your nav- own navigation. There's no, you know, there's no waypoints or anything like that. It's, you know, it's map and compass and, you know, and, you know, six 12 year olds. <laughs> and, um, but I, rem- I just, I always tend to sort of like go back to that feeling that was like at the end of that. So whilst we're doing it importantly, like it didn't seem fun at all, seemed a bit shit. Um, but at the end of it, it was a really, really awesome feeling. And I think, I think I was kind of looking for that maybe when I was like in my, I guess, early forties um, and kind of trying to think about, well, what's the next, you know, 10, 20 years going to look like, you know, what can me and Marianne, my, my wife and the co-founder of exact, what are we going to end up doing? And, um, and we saw um, some opportunities to basically make um, what we enjoyed for our leisure, our professional life. And I think that's really, that's where, that's where the, let's, let's give that a shot. And I think it was, um, wasn't like we didn't, didn't felt like we really had like a whole lot to lose, to be honest. Um, you know, apart from maybe a bit of money <laughs> and, but you know, even then it wasn't a huge amount because we did start off exact pretty much on a very <laughs> low budget, um, because the things that would be typically very expensive, like in terms of product development, we were able to do ourselves that we had those skills mm-hmm. ourselves between me, Marianne, and, and most importantly, Marianne's dad. Um, and, and the way we set up, um, you know, manufacturing and, and import and, and all those things, um, we, we managed to do it incredibly cheaply, <laughs> basically because we didn't have investors or, um, you know, a whole load of cash. We had, we had some savings. Um, and, um, and so we did have a pretty bare bones, uh, uh, go at it and our only, f- and, and we had a very clear focus, which was just like, let's get the product made and take it to some run stores. And and that was basically it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that's basically like how you began. Right. And with that, it sounds like you're very confident in, in your ability, but like you had to start a new business. You, you became an entrepreneur essentially. Like were there fears attached to that for yourself? Uh, you said, you know, other than losing a bit of money, but, <laughs> you know the stakes are you know higher when you're raising a family and and so, kind so of person, fear of the unknown you know did, did you face any of that so not to well maybe it doesn't come across as arrogant but i had no fear at all because you know to be honest um we're we're very fortunate mary and i we've you know we we're in a really privileged position like you know uh our parents like have jobs and their own houses and, and everything so you know and we had a car and you know a mortgage on a house if everything did go absolutely awfully like nothing bad was going to happen we'd have to sell the house and downsize and I don't know, move to Hochelaga or something but I like Hochelaga it'd be you know it wouldn't be bad <laughs> you know like really, really like it wouldn't be that bad um it's kind of a little bit like uh, I don't know, maybe maybe you'd lose a couple of years of work sort of thing but I don't think I don't look at it like that at all it would have been an interesting experience and I'd have had I don't think well I don't think I'd ever had if I had to go back and get the a job maybe similar as I had before I don't think I'd have too much difficulty finding one it'd be inconvenient but nothing sort of dreadful uh, um, would happen so no I didn't really have, <laughs> I didn't really have anything but I also didn't I must admit I didn't spend the whole time thinking about you know what that would look like that's not yeah. one of my that's not one of my um, strengths is sort of um, predicting doom. <laughs> I mean, that, and more power too, because like I think for a lot of people, when they get at certain points, they just get stuck in a rut and eventually they're like, oh, I want to quit my job. I want to do this. I want to do that. And taking action is the hardest part. You know, was that, did you find that was a challenge for you? Did, would the, did that come quite easily in terms of like getting the ball rolling and doing everything you needed to do in order to make made it, make so, it a success story so funny the starting stuff is isn't something i'm bad at so the taking action bit is fine my my personal challenge is the is the following it through to completion sort of like the 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 ongoing management um you know even though i you know i personally believe all those things like well if it's worth starting it's worth finishing i i believe that but the actual doing of it that is a bit more challenging but the Getting stuff started, jumping an idea, like having a having a project, and 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 sort of harnessing like the excitement and the optimism with that. I I don't struggle with that at all. It's kind of I feel like I'm 
it controls me more than I control it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where that's where the other personalities that were in the team that's that's how it really came together. So um, I'm I can I'm I may be good at starting the action. Um, I'm my skill set isn't the best at you know making sure it goes to completion. Marianne, on the other hand, is a ninja at at uh, planning and management and project management, and she picked up those skills in in her career too. In you know working in teams on industrial performance and things like that in the food industry, you know, funnily enough. Um, and so, and that's kind of even what what I find to this present day is, um, you know, as, as the company expands and we're hiring uh, people and creating you know uh, real jobs that people have to do and get paid for, is um, really um, making sure that the different skill sets that we need or or, um, or that we have an abundance but we need more of um, that's actually a really fun thing is making sure that um, as an entity we're able to do the things competently that that, that we have to have to do and so it's kind of maybe doesn't sound super sexy or or, or, or exciting but I actually think um, uh, that that sort of taking the necessary time to sort of you know plan a project through so that you you really do um, succeed when it comes to fruition. Um, I think that's something collectively, like I, by myself, I'm awful, but collectively, uh, right. we, we do a really good job. And that's probably one of the things I'm actually proudest of uh, with Exact, to be honest. Right. And and certainly at the beginning and, and throughout the beginning, uh, the, the early years, you had to get your hands dirty. So what, what were some of the things that... <laughs> That Lawrence had to do in order to oh, man. make sure that this this project came to fruition. Like, what what are some of the, you know, I mean, I say early because I think eventually you figure them out. I don't think all problems go away. Uh, you can probably attest to that. But like, what did you have to do in order to make sure that you held up your part of the bargain? Well, it kind of it kind of felt. <laughs> I feel like saying everything. And when I said, so what does that actually mean? What it means, like. So initially, when when the product would arrive in in Canada, it was in these white boxes, and there's just like a shitload of bars in there. And the the actual presenter boxes they got made um, on the West Island, uh, designed by my uncle in like flashy green and yellow and pink colors. Mm-hmm. And so, like the evening activity would be filling these boxes up with bars. And of course, as the as we did get more successful, we like started sponsoring races, like actually takes quite a long time to put fit 24 of those bars into one box and you have to do hundreds of these boxes. Um, um, so that's just, uh, funny enough, I do still do that today as well, like slightly less often, but um, it does have the um, uh, the added bonus of you do actually, the under, when when we now we contract um, uh, that work, well, it gets done by the manufacturer. Um, but when even when we're like, negotiating the price of it like we have a pretty good idea of just exactly what it entails because we've been doing it for 11 years ourselves personally mm-hmm. in our living rooms so um there's that but i think also maybe um just like just getting a store to carry the product i mean that in terms of like getting hands dirty um um the the only thing which and it's still right to this day true to this day is you do literally i don't think people just because the product tastes good or, and looks good and, and people like it, that isn't enough for a store to to pick it up. Um, and it's been quite a, quite an eye opener of just the amount of effort you need to put in for for a, for a customer to actually get on board with the get on board board with the product. And often, I mean, that was a big frustration as they'd be there eating the product, saying it was great, and like, yeah, no, we're not gonna we don't see a place for it and you know they're eating them as like they're eating bar after bar as they're talking to you and maybe their their partner is there too and like oh yeah these taste great it's like oh so you can order them no <laughs> and just getting through that um still to this day is is a really tough one and i think that's just any any sort of you know startup um uh brand or purveyor of services will will have lived that that's nothing unique for for us at all but um that that's that was that was a that was definitely um, um, a struggle. And of course, the further you are away from, you know, your home, um, the more effort that requires. So I recall, you know, driving out to Kingston, Ontario, to try and get our first account in, you know, Eastern Ontario. Um, And yeah, you make the drive out, 
I opened the account. It was great. And then drive back. But you realize like, okay, so that was, um, that was like, you know, an 11 hour day for a you know, $150 order. <laughs> like that's, that's not, that's not covering the, you know, that's not covering lunch, let alone uh, gas and, and one's time to do that. So there was definitely, um, we were definitely running on belief, um, knowing that, uh, being confident enough, like that the product was good and the athlete feedback. And we kind of felt at all times we're kind of fighting against every other piece in the, in the equation. But I always was reassured the fact that, well, if the person who's running their half marathon in the trails likes the product, it, we will get there eventually. But I completely, massively underestimated just how long it would take to, you know, create, build up a distribution network, have a logistics platform, um, you know, 12 calls with the store before they uh, gave it a shot. Um, uh, because also at the same time, you can't, I've always felt strongly, but we can't just like give it away for free because mm -hmm. then you devalue your, 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 your product and your service. Um, so the whole business of the brand recognition and the distribution of the product um never ceases to uh well maybe it doesn't amaze me anymore but certainly for the first nine years never ceased to amaze me just how uh grueling uh it can be even when you have a completely differentiated product um when custom testimonials are pouring in like you know every week these days not those days and when people are using language like this saved my race you know this saved my race i mean that's that, that's a that's a pretty good compliment. I'll take that. Yeah, so we're getting this feedback on one side and the other side is like, no, I'm good. I've got, you know, I've got my hammer. Being like, really? and, and what, like, yeah. what do they mean by that? that you saved my race. What is that a specific situation or? Absolutely. They were just completely bonked out and they're going through the, the feed station and they don't feel like eating anything. And there's one thing there and they pick that up and they're like, oh, like I can eat this. This is the one thing I can eat today in this moment, you know, with, with what I've uh, been through um and um and when we're when we're you know an expo situation or, or doing a tasting that's that's something i mean it brings me like massive joy every time i hear it but uh i've, I've heard it like hundreds of you know thousands of times now over the years so so i think that is massive fuel like when you know that well the end user like the, the athlete if they believe in the product, we can fight through the rest of it. Like, you know, the distribution, working with like these bigger stores, working with buyers and their, <laughs> and their, um, and their terms. Are there any, yeah, their terms. Yeah. That's always fun. <laughs> uh, what, um, there, are there any stories that stand out to you as like, you don't know how you got through this specific situation, but whether it's a trade show or a race weekend or. You know, oh, I mean, sleeping there's, there's in the trunk of your car. Or, I don't know. Oh, yeah, all of those. Um, <laughs> I mean, there was. The, I, get, I don't know. I, I mean, I remember there's one particular weekend, and um, you know, see, the thing is, when your brand is so tiny, it's kind of like you can literally go anywhere. Like I could, I could go on the street in front of my apartment, and there'll be someone on a bike and someone running past. You know, within ten minutes. So, I, no matter what action you do, you will find a customer like so the problem is is like every when when every particular race or run club outing or bike ride or, or triathlon because because no one knows you you can go to any of them and you will get yourself known to, to more people um but, but the problem is is when that, that's not really a strategy right that's just okay if we just turn up somewhere then like we'll find someone that doesn't know us and we can taste it and they'll probably like it um but it took us a while to to kind of digest that so I, I always remember one of my favorite stories is there was a snowshoe racing event in sherbrooke um you know which is you know a solid two and a half hour drive to montreal it started i don't know at 7 a.m um there was a particularly like is in february so quebec february um i don't know is it it wasn't a minus a thousand but you know it's close and i just remember you know driving out there the kids must have been like seven and five or seven or six and eight or something like that you know but we always bundled them into the car so they take them with with us and we drive there and like and so we're driving like it's not it's it's not going to be light for a while and but at least you're driving it's like well you know we're going to go there we're going to print the bars you know 
it's it's you know there's it's Le Coureur is there like you know we gotta you know we gotta impress them <laughs> and we get there and because the weather was so shitty there's literally I think there's like 16 people at this race so so our numbers brought it up to 20 just us four <laughs> and yeah. and you kind of think just like what are we doing here um but I also seem to remember at the time not even thinking what are we doing there it's like okay let's go <laughs> like let's let's you know let's let's promote to like the 16 people that are here um and we kind of run off that blind optimism i think for quite a while but i also am pretty convinced that it did pay benefits because you also you never know who is um at those races um and you you usually i mean i so if it's not like I didn't think it before, but if there's one thing I've uh, learned, and this this is actually only gets truer and truer, like in, in in the later years, the power of turning up in person um, with you know some bars or um, you know your beer or or like you know a great pair of socks is is a very effective way of promoting. The problem is it's you know it's very expensive to to scale, um, and um, I think a lot of companies. Um, I, from as far as I can tell, have either forgotten how to do it or, or, or stop for one way. But that's something we've always really pers persevered with. And I think it's one of the ways um, I know a lot of brands are very good at doing that. So I wouldn't say we differentiate ourselves, but we certainly um, have an impact on on the communities we choose to, prom to promote in. And it's something where we put um, a lot of energy and time in, in in making sure we when we do that we do it right and, and it touches many aspects of the of the business who we recruit to help us uh, do that like so my uh, like I think of Pierre Luc uh, Pierre Luc Cartier in Quebec City who's our tech rep and is is taking over that part um, of you know coordinating where we turn up at events and how we work with our ambassadors to to do a really good job but also the type even the type of folks that end up being ambassadors for us we're always way more interested in people. Uh, that will have like a connection with um, a sporting community rather than how many podiums have done or how many followers they have on 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 whatever um and what we're actually looking for is people who will, like kind of do the same thing as we were doing the equivalent maybe a trying to do a slightly better job than 16 people for a snowshoe race um but what we found is like is when we can get the 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 product into the mouth of someone then it all works out. So it's all about trying to trying to make that happen, and that you know people can you know communicate well, and then you know that it's authentic, um, and that's kind of how we've built out our whole promotional strategy, and uh, which now stretches from um, Vancouver Island to Newfoundland, and down to uh, Washington D.C., where I have the pleasure of going like once once every six weeks now. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, and you keep showing up and I think that's, but that's like, that's part of who you are too, Lawrence. You know, you're a very like social guy. You like I, to connect. I do, I do have difficulty to turn down an invitation, I must admit. Yeah, you, you love to show up. You love to connect and, you know, just getting to know you, I'm sure goes a long way too, right? When you, when you, when someone comes and says hi to you and, you know, a handshake and a smile and, uh, there's, you know, you're you're essentially the face of the the brand that you're that you've created. Are your motivations today the same as they were at the beginning of this thing, or have they evolved? In, and... in, in all honesty, I I really think they are. I don't I don't see a big difference. Um, uh, yes, is it what day are we? We Tuesday. So Sunday was run around one two five, um, phenomenal event in our hometown in Montreal. Um, a six-person relay where we do the, the tour of Montreal Island, 125K. I wasn't able to run this year because I've got a, uh, a small injury in my knee. Um, but just the, the energy, and even, even though I think we, we had a very, <laughs> I've had a very uh, uh, highly charged last two and a half weeks with lots of travel. And on Friday was the first day I was, um, uh, we'd just gotten back from, uh, from Europe, and I knew that there was uh, this race coming up. And on Friday, I was kind of like, oh, my God, I can't believe like, I've planned myself for this thing. But in the same breath, I'm also saying, but I know, like, it'll be awesome on the day. I'll have a, like a shitload of fun. And uh, we've got this, you know, fantastic team of, 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 of friends um, who are, you know, who are running for uh, Exact. 
Um, another new element, we've integrated the Marathon of Montreal into our team um, to basically to kick off our uh, our partnership for the year. We wanted to uh, to communicate on that. But again, once again, um, instead of just communicating it, we wanted to, um, you know, do an event together. So Alex Ratte, the um, director of uh, um, Beneva Montreal Marathon, he came in our team and we all ran together. We we're running in the yeah. Montreal Marathon shirts. Um, because once again, how much more fun to communicate on 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 something we've just done and built together, fueling with exact and and uh, you know and trying to uh, just let people know that you know Montreal Marathon is a great event and 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 they're turning up too in different um, uh, run clubs around Montreal and kind of you know maybe and repairing the reputation that maybe once did have, but um, uh, just you know having fun together doing something that we love, which is, you know, run against the clock and and working as a team. Um, and, and sure enough, I had an absolutely brilliant time, despite the fact that <laughs> I'd been traveling and um, uh, working my ass off for the last three weeks and hadn't been home. But I'm I'm lucky in, in that sense is I will, I get energy. I'll, I'll feed off that. So even if I'm like, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm tired and worn out, but if you plonk me in espaciele, you know, um handing out bars for people to go off in the different races like that will bring me energy and that will wake me up and that will energize me um and you know i'll be good for another i don't know 12 hours or whatever so i do i do i do actually feed off that um so it's you know it's not a it's not a coincidence that that's kind of um i don't know become my job i guess yeah maybe the biggest challenge is not having more lawrence uh more of lawrence's <laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't possibly answer. <laughs> What's your definition? What would you say is your definition for success? Like you, you have some kind of um, re- your own recipe for what success is and what it means to you. Can you can you explain that in words? Um, I think I, have, I, I, I can have a I can I can have a knock at it. I think um, I can I can t- I can certainly talk to it for um, how. How me as a person and 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 secondarily the uh, the brand have have become. Um, I must admit, I'm not used. And I haven't fully integrated the fact that we are successful. To be honest, um, I'm, I kind of think it's like, well, we're working and it's working. We're working and it's working out. Is is more uh, the, the the words I I choose. But I, I thank you for for <laughs> describing that as success. Um, I think. Um, Certainly, from my perspective, um, uh, I think passion has to be number one, and and so um, passion for me is the combination of sort of belief and excitement. So I do, funnily enough, every day I am actually still excited by the idea of of, of our bars like being used to fuel someone's uh, race or be in someone's store or strapped to someone's top bar. Um, it doesn't really make any logical sense why that should be exciting, but but to me, I find I find I find that exciting. In the same way, I guess I mean I, one thing that excites me very much is uh, cooking dinner, and um, if when I bring in whatever the thing I've been making, whether it's you know a massive lamb curry or a beautiful uh, pizza that I've just pulled out of my uni oven, great product. Uh, <laughs> 550, uh, seriously, 550 degrees in five minutes portable wow. oven, amazing yeah uh, off wood pellets I'm um, pizza tonight. so there you go but like when you when you bring that food out and like you put it on the the table or on like the lump of rock if you happen to be like on mount royal uh at a tailgate party with with club the trail Morian or yeah, your campsite or wherever it is when when people like when their face lights up because of the food you just put on the table, that's my uh, that's my sort of personal happy uh, happy fuel. Um, I can't think of many things that bring me more joy than just that, the 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 awesome the awesome meal that you'll that you'll have together, right? Um, and I suppose like baking the bars and the protein wafers and all those things, that's kind of a little bit a little bit like that. Um, I know that these these things like taste awesome. Um, they help people out on their trainings, on their racings, on their adventures. Um, and where 
the amount of energy we put when we're trying to make them right is 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 um well it's actually a bit more complex than planning a menu for a dinner party but they um i see some real parallels and i don't think it's 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 so surprising that both of them uh, get me super excited so i think that that passion and belief and interest just interest caring about okay what's that what's the thing that i'm going to make for these friends or what's the product we're going to make for our customers um if you care enough about it um i think the other things kind of should should work themselves out and you'll you'll arrive with a desirable product that people will be, will be happy to purchase and purchase again and again and again um and as far as the company is concerned that's the success right we need to um we need to sell all the product that we get made and if that happens that that kind of that kind of <laughs> That's kind of the, the game as far as the business is concerned. Yeah. And, and like back when we spoke in your interview, like that passion for cooking and um, the the company, it's kind of this, this synergy that you have with it where you're making product that tastes good, that, that people can eat and makes them feel good too. And it's just kind of this ecosystem of of you know goods that you, you can enjoy that will help you and for you like – you're you're plating it for them so that's that's super like a fun way to look at it too you know and i think and i think the really the actual the cool so the surprise was the surprise was um and what the what was really rewarding was so you know we changed professions and we moved to okay so we're now working in this this you know basically i guess it's the running sporting outdoors industry is 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 our, is our industry like we provide a product in in that in that space, um, so the surprise and the coolest thing was when we brought our our product and our commitment and our passion and our time, it was reciprocated um, and continues to be reciprocated in in cool and surprising and seemingly random ways, which builds up and kind of takes on an energy of its own. And any anyone that's um, you know, been running for a while would have would have experienced that, and anyone that's been you know cycling for a while would have experienced that as, as well. Is you develop these friendships and relationships, you know, these people that, uh, you know, if you didn't weren't at that race together or running that you know that that nasty stretch, you know, running on empty, waiting to get the next aid station like for you know fifteen k or whatever, um, you you do the, it's kind of there's a I don't know a mutual attraction of uh, uh, of people that get energized by the by similar things, um, and I mean I must admit early days I remember someone who had been in the industry a while they're saying oh by the way you know you're going to start getting you know emails from people like wanting to be ambassadors and things like that I'm like what are you talking about what's an ambassador <laughs> this isn't this isn't the State Department and um, and he says no just like just you know just bear in mind you know you, you're and, I'm just like, and sure enough, um, it, it's and that's something I think that's really cool and something that I've not experienced, um, like in 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 um, professional walk of life. But just um, and and coming from any quarter, it could be other races, it could be race organizers, it could be just people who are volunteering at an event, and they're just like, we like what you're doing, we'd like to help you out, and and that I thought was something really quite um, that was something unexpected, and. And actually, that was a key ingredient for success because we're a super small team. Like in Canada, we're, um, I don't know, it's, it's with 6.5 um, employees, I guess, with, with, with part-timers. Um, yeah, when we, uh, at the end of, end of next month, weekend of 24th, 26th of May, uh, with the main nutrition sponsor, Auto Race Weekend and Calgary Marathon. And if, if you're a runner, you either those two events, like, I think I think our team will be upwards of twenty people in Ottawa, wow. uh, ten people in Calgary, so we can show up and we'll appear as this like big machine. But mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we ain't. <laughs> we've got a we've got a, a great hardcore of, of of a fantastic team of employees, but we're we're supported and accompanied and 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 made awesome by um, uh, a network of like friends and ambassadors and, and customers and partners um because even in those cases we, we want to create a good experience for uh for the runners there right and, and it sure. makes good promotion sense that's how we promote because we want 
yeah, we want them to buy our bar. Of course, we want them to get our bar, but a, we want them to buy it because we think it's a good bloody bar. Yeah. Um, but we also want to, you know, join in the the fun. We want to have a good experience. We want to be remembered as uh, the folks that high five them when they cross the finish line, yeah. and 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 you know, and when they're kind of totally spent and just all they feel like doing is collapsing in the heat in Confederation Park. Like we want them to be some nice music, so we'll put on the nice music, <laughs> DJ Ottawa, and yeah. um, and and so on and so forth. So. And I think there's also so one, of, one of the things that I really love is there's a great outlet for uh, creative energy too. So um, you know, I I I I consider I now consider myself a student of the Cheer Station. Um, I want to thank District Running Collective in Washington D.C. for showing me the way. <laughs> uh, those people, man, unbelievable! Like they are serious about their fun. Like I have never seen like a group of volunteers come together. Yeah, and just so well organized to create the most insane party, you know, for four and a half hours that I've ever seen anywhere, and and that's actually quite an accomplishment too. So, I guess that's the thing that's like, I wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for the bars, but the bars weren't part of that. Uh, it was the run event that was part a part of that, and um, and that's just uh, that's just just <laughs> I just felt like a little kid. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, just feeding off that energy and then and then I come back about to Montreal and trying to reproduce like little bits of it in my own my own little way. Um and I think the so the space that working the events and how we when how we you know promote exact and so on that gives me like free canvas to basically uh uh go out and play and have fun and and, and people and other people always join in so then it, it's kind of worth it. So I've I've yet to have I think the day when I'm at, if I'm just all there and I'm saying, hey, come on, let's go do this, and everyone's just there, like, mm. <laughs> then then it won't be fun, right? Uh, <laughs> they'll just feel they'll just feel like an idiot, and um, they might feel like an idiot. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But it sounds like it was a very memorable experience, and like each race is unique and memorable in its own regard. When it's all said and done, Lawrence, like how how would you like to be remembered, like in your contribution to all of this? Not just well, how I'd like, through how the I'd brand, like to be you know, but how I'd like to be remembered is like, wow, what an amazing dancer. But that's not gonna happen. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. That that ship sailed. Um I'm now practicing my meniscus friendly moves, and it's that's actually very limiting. Um but no, in, in seriousness, I think um I don't know. Just um it's actually really simple. It's just um like um I want to be remembered as like as a as a as a great partner, a great a great guest, a great partner, a great contributor, someone that um, our our um, event, community, race, club, city, um, house <laughs> was you know, block corner. Um, there was um, a good vibe and a good energy, which was increased thanks to the presence of of of, of that person and 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 his uh, and his team if if there's a bunch of us i think as simple as that we want to be we want to be invited back with that guest yeah and i think you are time and time again you just keep showing up and every year i see photos of you guys at more and more and more events and um you know with that smile with first and foremost the human aspect is something that you always put forth and I think that's what people remember the most, you know. Um, Thank you. And then, of course, you, there's a good product behind it too. So that's that's awesome. Um, I think, it, yeah, I think it would be, it wouldn't be worthwhile if the product wasn't there. I think that was like it's it's very much we have to get that get that right. Um, and when that's right, then you know we kind of I feel like if the product's good enough and you know it's embraced enough and it's generally you know um, a good product. Then it kind of like I don't know. It somehow it feels like it gives us the right to 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 celebrate and be a be a part of it. And you know, and and you know, we we want to be you know we want to be in a, a part of it. We want to make a contribution. Um, but but we can't. That can't compensate for a, a less than great product. Exactly. Well, that's all for the exact story. You got, we got a lot in there, and I, I appreciate you sharing a bit more uh the personal side of you Lawrence and 
and kind of what you bring to the table. And, you know, we appreciate you and, and certainly our listeners do too. They've been eating up those codes, no pun intended. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. And, um, and, and thanks for the opportunity to, to talk about it. It's been, it's been a while. So um, really, really appreciate that. And um, we'll talk sorry, next time. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Cheers. Right. Cheers, mate. Bye.